This time I want to make complex time signatures and having each instrument able to run at its own pace, allowing for polyrhythms. The first step to that is adding inputs for divisions per beat or the number of squares in between the black bars and beats per measure. I add that to where the rest of the piano roll HTML goes, making that text look even uglier, uh, adding an input change function to the on click, and then that'll update the values within the roll itself. Since these values are relevant to the piano roll, it makes sense to store them within the piano roll object rather than have them be another global variable. Despite bar usually being synonymous with measure, here the black bars represent each beat. The bars were previously generated on every fourth division using a mod statement, but now I can make it any value I want. It's now the divisions per beat value. I also changed the way that the piano roll objects are instantiated. Instead of declaring the width, it makes more sense to define the divisions per beat and beats per measure because width is now a derived value. Since we're now changing how wide the roll is, we need to also change its stored internal width every time we update BM or DB, standing for beats per measure and divisions per beat respectively. When these two are multiplied together, we get a new width. I want to take the constructor for the table's HTML element and make it its own function. Right now, only generating each piano row is contained in its own function, but I should make it for the whole table too, because I'm going to need to regenerate the table completely when these values are changed. As such, I need to empty the table by setting its inner HTML to nothing at the start of the function. Once this is done, the width should update automatically, but unfortunately the internal data is still broken because I never went and fixed that. Yeah, okay, and then all that I need to do is make it so the data actually matches. So perhaps before taking the new width, I can just figure out the old width. Then I can figure out the width difference by subtracting the old width and the new width. There are three cases for this, one where the previous width is larger, one where the previous width is smaller, and one where they're the same. If they're the same, I don't care, so I'm not writing a condition for that. But I'm gonna handle each of these differently because I'm deleting versus adding. So when deleting cells, I can just pop the number of times of the width difference, which will just remove the last element of each row. When adding cells, I guess we'll just go from the previous width to the current width, and then just add blank cells like so. Now I can change the number of divisions and the number of bars, and if I increase it past its amount, it looks good. If I plop in some values like so, and then decrease it, they stay, increase it, it gets rid of it. Huh, I don't think I coded this right yet. All right, I see what's happening. I'm deriving the length of the measure based on the number of divisions. So these notes are just ending up longer because that's what it's calculated to be. So I don't end up getting polyrhythms, but I do end up getting different length notes with this way because now these notes hang longer because there's less of them. But that's not what I want. I want polyrhythms. Well, first I think it might make more sense to convert seconds per measure into beats per minute. And then I should tie the speed of this to the number of beats. The BPM is for the entire song. So luckily this only has like one value that I have to change, which is the measure length. Okay, so I guess we're running this roll updater 100 times per second. And to figure out the number of updates per measure, this is what I currently have. This is what I need. And I want to turn this into this. So you can see when you multiply these two units together, the seconds cancel, which gives you updates per measure. Well, also consider that minute over here is kind of a necessary unit. Replace that with 60 seconds. Well, let's take measure length out of the picture for now because I don't want that anymore. And um, I don't know, maybe let's divide these two values. We multiply by the beats per measure, the so beats cancel, and we get 60 times updates per measure. All right, so I might have like converted it into BPM, and also um, tied the timing to beats in the same uh, move right there. So that was running at two beats per minute. So that was running pretty slow. Oh yeah, default value two. Okay, let's make it 120. There, now the BPM is 120. Okay, that's still a little bit too slow. Did I get all my units wrong? Maybe I wanted to multiply by 60 and not divide by 60. 
Uh, okay, it's still broken. I'm div oh, I'm multiplying by the measure length, which is now 120. Right, which is wrong now. So before, when it was sex per measure, the number of divisions is divisions per measure. So before, we had seconds per measure being divided by divisions per measure, which is like measures per division. Measures cancel, we get seconds per division. So maybe if we have seconds per update, which is just the reverse of that, we multiply that by updates per measure, which is the UPM, right? And we multiply that by measures per division, right? Then that, the U's cancel, the M's cancel, we get seconds per division. Okay, simple. What, what does this give us again? Seconds per division? I don't even, what did I want again? This is UPM. It's now our UPS multiplied by numdivs, and then we divide by that, I think. And then that might give the right value. I don't know. Okay, that ordeal is solved, yay. Let me get another instrument in here. Three, seven, I don't know, 11, 11's good. Huh, I don't even know if I'm doing this right now. Oh, you know what, I think I know what's happening now. They're all keeping to like a central time. They all need to like have their own timers. And then yeah, if they all had their own bar counter, then they would actually be able to be separate from each other. Because the bar counter is what's actually doing the counting. So now the bar counter is stored within the roll object. Bar counter is now a property of the piano rolls. So whatever piano rolls I is, we use that one's bar counter. Let's put it inside the for loop. Yeah, okay, so now they have their own unique bar counter. It almost works, except the five just like disappears. Like it, it goes three times and then it never goes again. Like why is that happening? <laughs> I can't think of a good reason. So let me put in a breakpoint. Is it hitting in here? Yes. Is it getting to here? No. Okay, so it's this that's killing it. Well, the division index is greater than the number of divisions. There are five divisions, but the div index is eight. How did the div index get to eight? Okay, well, the bar counter is currently doing some weird floating point division, it seems. Huh, that's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> so JavaScript, I guess, has this weird function where if you try to parse in a really small scientific number, it doesn't give you a zero, which that's what that should be, right? It's so close to zero and floating point, but no, it, it just thinks it's an eight. I never realized this would be a problem. Oh, that's so bad, JavaScript. Why do you do this? Okay, so maybe the solution to this is not to use parsint, but to use math.floor. Let, let, let's try that instead. Sounds kind of ugly. Let me go like Shostakovich it and like only do like the harmonic frequencies or something. All right, so that um, that works, but it maybe would be useful as a guide to have like a little yellow line showing in which division we are for each of these. So I got here is a yellow tracker bar highlighting a square, and it's kind of just floating on this. Not sure what the units are, but I mean, it would move across like this, except quantized. Uh, so I guess all I did really was just add this tracker class, but I also put a container around it and the piano table as well. 
That way I can say the position is absolute and it'll be contained within the piano table. In code, I still need to go and determine the height and the left. I also have this pointer events thing, which just lets you select things even though there is a thing on top of the other thing. Uh, I now need to write code that will actually put the tracker into the right position. So within the role updater function, I'm just gonna do a tracker update function and I'll give it the div index, which is the index of whichever division or whichever square we are here. But we also need to give it the instrument index. So that's I. And now let me go make that function. Okay, right, so we've got the tracker update. So what do we have to do first? We've got to get the actual tracker uh, class. So we've got to get the instrument. And then I'll do query selector on that to get the tracker class. I think I made these tiles each like 22 wide, I think. It might be 22 times the div index, and then plus px because it wants pixels. Well, almost. It's just not in the right spot. What did I start it at? They, they say that they're 20, but here it says they're 23. Why why is it doing that to me? Right, look, none of them are ever, are ever 20. They're all either 23, 24. I never told any of them to be 23. Why are they 23? All right, there's some numbers. I guess because they're 23, or if they're on a bar, which is the beat index, they're 24. Okay, can this work, please? Okay, it looks like it works now. And if I have two going at once, does it stick to its own rhythm? Yeah, they're offset. Ah. Okay, new problem I realized. So when it's not using the roll, it doesn't increment the beat counter. Even if it's not actually using the roll, it should stay in time. Because I, I could just click pause it, and then resume it by clicking this button. Like before, it made sense to skip over everything, but I feel like now it doesn't. Now it's like, even if it doesn't play, it should still run the logic. I feel like these should definitely be in time with each other because most people would not be using complex time signatures. They would just expect things and instruments to be synchronized on the beat. So I guess when I make a new roll object, I initially set the bar counter to zero, but I should check to see if the rolls are playing. And if they are playing, then we have to keep the bar counter in sync with something. The easiest solution to this for me is just keep it in sync with the zero with index. So yeah, to keep them in sync, just if they're playing, take the piano roll and add its bar counter. So if I add an instrument, does it stay in sync? It looks like it's in sync. Um, you know what I haven't done? And I haven't had fun. <laughs> Anyway, so then I noticed that the clear button at the bottom of the piano roll is no longer always aligned with the right side, so I went and did some math to fix that too. I'm gonna make weird music again, okay?